Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg, here to ask the question we've all been wondering. It's been building for six years, and finally tonight, I think we're going to get to the bottom of it. Jake, Abby? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is YHS cake? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to need Mikey Day to help us figure well, that out. We're we're sweet, <laughs> yes. we're filling, yes. and we're all fluff. Yes. There it is. Yes. Yeah. We are I cake. cake. I think we're cake. Is it a podcast or cake? Uh, it's not a meal. <laughs> Soup is not a meal. Cake is not a meal. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Craig Goldberg here, as always, with my co-hosts. My wonderful, beautiful co-host. Remember, I used to do that all the yeah, time. Yeah, you did. But then we, like, progressed <laughs> as people. And we stopped doing that. Abigail Gardner, what's up? Yeah, I'm your cohort. Um, yeah, I'm great. Thank you. It's been a nice day. Been, been enjoying myself, chilling, relaxing. It's a chill day. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake, how are you, sir? I'm okay. I did not get to just chill and relax all day. I had to go to work, and I hated it. <laughs> Dude, I, <laughs> it's my I first understand. day back at work after like a fun weekend, and it sucks. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a good weekend. Jake, you're money's honey cool. What? I said, but money is cool. You made it the was, money back. That it you was spent. it was cool to like get money and put it <laughs> in your wallet instead, instead of, of doing the opposite. And it, it and <laughs> you know, I've been off of what you know. I didn't work. I haven't worked the rest of the week. I was off a couple of days last week, so I was like, oh, this is cool. This is this cool. is cool. I like it, this. Money. Cool. This is why I do this. So yeah. you felt like people came in and gave you money instead of you going to other people and giving them money. Yeah, but then I got mad. I <laughs> so I, I made a good amount of money today. You know, my I make. You know, I'm. Everybody knows what I do. So uh, my the amount well, they of money might I not. make. Jake, day. what what do you do? For sure, those I, who are new. I, <laughs> for those who are new, I, I tattoo for a living. So sometimes my income is different. Day to you know, I don't make the right. same amount of money. Sure, I made okay. a good amount of money today. Okay. And I got home and I was counting it and I got mad that I did not have that money for the toy show, <laughs> which makes like... no sense. But I was yeah. like, fuck, if I could just go back. If you I could, could just go back. Else. Okay. Dude, that's funny. Well, Abby, we posted our video of our toy show. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. At I want to say Atlanta. congrats to Jake on the good money day. I know that's important. It was a good money mm -hmm. day. And Thank congrats you. to all of us on good pickups of the toy show. Yeah. yeah. We, we have a spend a meter. <laughs> <laughs> which I, that's my stress tonight honestly like putting that out there i i mean i'm proud of it i suppose well well i'm stressed, stressed because out. i think we spent more than you actually put on the meter <laughs> yeah i think I we did there's some things that didn't ding on there i was like oh he missed, <laughs> he missed this he missed well, this there was a couple things we didn't like there was a couple like you things know when, we didn't report yeah yeah unreported it's like unreported income unreported money yes, yeah. we <laughs> <laughs> when you're at a um a toy show and you're trying to film, like there's times where like I would come back and Jake just had a bag of stuff. I'm like, well, what happened? Yeah. I, well, yeah. Let me put my camera in the bag. Or Abby went off and bought something. And yeah, um, so we tried to get all of it. It was almost all there. Um, yeah, no major purchases were left. No, did so. the no. Michael Jordan wrapping paper make it into the count? <laughs> it, yeah, I, I think it did. So I, I think, think it did. did. I'm looking. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So we went to Toy Lana. We we covered it a good amount on toy anxiety. We claimed this that week. on our. We sorry. claimed the. Stop the text. Yeah, what's going over there? Oh, <laughs> you're still doing the tax yes. thing. Okay. Um, but it was good. It, it felt good to go to a toy show. It felt good to be out in the world. Jake, uh, Toy Lana. We went last year. How do you think it compared this year? Was it? Did it live up to your expectations? Yeah, I think so. You know, um, I, I think I bought more stuff this year than I did last year, and and I, I guess that means that it had to live up. I I was hoping, I, I knew there was not going to be any Godzilla stuff, but I was hoping there would be. Um, right. So I'm a little bummed by that, but I bought a lot of cool stuff, and I'm excited about it. And I'm and I'm kind of I'm looking around my toy room right now, and you know, last the last few weeks have been pretty big for me as I was able to um, clear out a giant pile of stuff that was building up. I, I got some more space in here, but now my floor is now covered again in toys that I have to find out like where to put them. But yeah, yeah I think it was, I, I don't want to say there was nothing about the show that was, I don't want to say it was a bad show. It wasn't, but it is a lot of the same sellers there. I, I saw a lot of the same stuff some of the sellers are selling the same stuff that they sold last year. And 
that kind of that that's a little bit of a bummer but right. i think we all found a lot of cool stuff a lot of good pickups mm-hmm. yeah. i know my my toy room is kind of like it was clean and now it's messy again and last night i was getting cats out of there you know gene bean gene she her new thing is sleeping under the uss flag table mm-hmm. and there's a bunch of other boxes in there and she kind of like barricades herself to where when she gets in there I can't get her out until she's ready to come out. And you, Jake, you've met this cat. She's about yeah. 20 pounds. She's not going anywhere. She doesn't want to go. No, so dude, that's her. I was now. having I was having toy room stress last night trying to get the cats out. <laughs> also, we're out of cat treats. We were out of temptations, to be honest. Yeah. So, so was, you were just like crunkle, crinkling bags to try to like get her a out and cool her. I was trying to fake her out. <laughs> I was like, look, I've got treats. And it's just like Pringles or something. I don't know. She's not anyway, dumb. No cats in the toy room. No. She's not. She knows exactly what she's doing. She saunters in she there when we're the not sound. paying attention. <laughs> and then she like posts up. She knows. Where she she knows. can't be new. And also, she loves Jake. Dude, she misses you. What like, happened, Abby? Tell him. After you and Jess left. And I don't know. She probably loves Jess just as much too, I think. Because uh, when you guys no. left. And- no. It's just <laughs> Jake. Me. You have. You have a really special relationship with her. Um, and you always pay really nice attention to her and give her pets. So she loves you. Uh, and when you left the other day after you closed the door, she sat facing the, the front door and the porch just like for two hours, like looking, waiting <laughs> oh. for you to come back. So but then Abby goes, but then Abby was like, I think she thinks you and Jake are the same like entity. And I was like, well, that doesn't make sense because I'm right. I'm right. Yeah, here. she's like this dad, right. dad, both dads. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> um but listen i want before we get into anything before we talk about our weekend um before we talk about ghostbusters or anything i, I got some stress and I, I it's been a while since i've done a proper stress by the way somebody commented on youtube that they went into the archives and listened to the entire linda blair uh story oh wow the Very two cool. part the two part saga our early yeah. one um and uh, they they were like a new YHS listener. I thought that was really cool. So yeah, if you're new to this, if you're new to us, as we as we continue to to grow, and we're like a like a ball rolling down the hill, we're bringing on new people all the time. And say hey, sometimes you got to let old people go too, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, there's probably people that listen to us for the first you're two years and haven't come back. And for them, your analogy needs work. You're an idiot. The ball that rolls down the hill and gathers people. That's what we are. <laughs> And well, it's we like the be- critter ball from critters. Okay. Okay. And we're cake also. Also yeah. we're cake. And we're cake. Yep. We're yeah. cake. Okay, cool. Um, I've got a stress. But before I do that, I want to say, Jake, I know you and Jake he recorded Monster Island last night. Is this true? Yeah. It well, is true. It? Well, how was it? <laughs> Did you have a good time? It was you great, man. Was- YHS Prime is gonna uh, someday morph into a YHS on Monster Island after show. <laughs> it was sort of a it was sort of a little more YHS like because we uh, we we didn't talk about any like specific Godzilla movies. We we kind of roasted Super Seven for about a half an hour, and then <laughs> um, and then you know we 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 both talked about the toy show. I talked about going to a toy show as a buyer, and Jay talked about his experience at a toy show over the weekend as well, but as a seller. So it was cool. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, that I think it'll be up by the time this gets up. So uh, if you have not listened to YHS on Monster Island, our Kaiju and Godzilla and Monster specific spinoff show with Jake and Jake Key, find the podcast feed or find the playlist here on YouTube mm-hmm. because the knowledge bombs that are dropped. Yeah. It's like people say that Godzilla is like uh, an allegory for, for nuclear warfare. I think it's an allegory for the nuclear warfare that Jake and Jay are dropping every week on Monster Island. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. what I'm... I was going to say. It's an education. Yeah, it's that, that you won't too. even yeah, know you're sure. getting because it's very fun and yeah. pleasurable and enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Well, also in that way, Abby, it's sort of like cake. <laughs> yes, you know the educational part of the cake, <laughs> the sprinkles at the very center yeah, of the cake. Yeah. There's three yeah. people who get this joke, and there's a bunch of people who don't. Everybody know it was the Dude, number one show Netflix. on Netflix yesterday. They everyone stick. has Netflix. I got in one episode comments, left. Let us know. It's, I was literally I writing in my journal show. and using cake metaphors today. Um, <laughs> because it's just in there. My Everything favorite could be cake. My favorite moment ever is we're doing Wookies and Cookies, and we're uh, Jake and Abby are arguing with each other about the the portions. This yeah. is four years ago. Yeah. 
And Jake looks at Abby and goes, baking's not a science. She goes, it's literally a science. Like it was the funniest, it was the funniest thing ever. It was it's uh, a science that I don't actually enjoy. Yeah. And I'm gonna say that right now. That's not my thing. Uh, uh, but we we did good. No, that. we did good. We had fun. Okay, here we go. My stress. I talked about it. I've been teasing it for a couple weeks, but I, I figured we talk about it on Toy Anxiety. We talk about it in real life. We got to bring it to YHS Prime. I am in the process. I am in the midst of making my holy grail toy purchase. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have been actively searching for a near complete or complete Ghostbusters Filmation Ghost Command for the last two to three years. Uh, finding um, finding one is near impossible. Every now and again, they pop up on eBay. They're never complete. They're always broken. There's always various things wrong with it. And they always still go for tons of money. I mean, there was a guy last year, I think he got a thousand bucks for just the two pieces, the two sides of the house with broken tabs and nothing else. Wow. So it has become increasingly rare, increasingly hard to find. And I have been building out my Filmation Ghostbusters collection for like for years now, a couple figures at a time. It's expensive. And all the reasons with vintage toys, right? We all know when you're putting a line together, it's a, it takes time. It's a, you know, there's money involved and there's accessories involved mm -hmm. and it, it, it could be a lot. I finally put the figure collection together over pandemic. Uh, and by the way, if we were in the past listening to this and I just dropped over pandemic, like part of a casual conversation, we'd be like, what, what is he talking about? There was a pandemic. <laughs> There's no way there was a pandemic. That must've been like some sort of music festival they went to. Um, anyway. Widespread pandemic. Yeah, there you go. Um, I got the vehicles. I got all the stuff. Pandemic couple... at the disco. Nice. Oh, nice. Sorry. We got two I'm sorry. Good ones in. No, I'm it's sorry. worth it. If you have another one, jump in. Did you go to the uh, the Atlanta Zoo? They got the the two baby uh, pandemics. Uh, the International House of Pandemics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, no, it's beautiful. It's, what were you talking about? Filmation the, goes the passage command. of time. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> God forbid one makes small talk when they're driving. Hey, this was two years ago we heard this. Anyways, a couple weeks ago in our Toy Anxiety live stream, a gentleman who has his own YouTube channel, uh, toy channel name SoCal Shallowin. Shallowin. I can't Shallin. say that word. I can't say it. Shallin. I know I can't say it. Shall. SoCal Shallowin. Lynn. He said, hey, my local toy store has a ghost command. Don't know if it's complete. The box has been there for a couple of years. I, I was like, dude, please slide into my DMs. And he did. He slid right in. Mm -hmm. We started talking. He's in San Diego. Literally, I would have driven to go get this thing the next day. It is in the furthest place it could be in the United States from us in Atlanta. <laughs> I still considered just going called the shop started talking started getting the details it is not only complete it is unused in bags unused sticker sheet with box we went back and forth for weeks he sent me detailed photos of everything finally closed the deal so cal shallon went to the store he packed everything up for me gave him a little finder's fee okay when when you go to work for for the YHS, when you do those kind of favors, you need a little little that back end scratch. We take care of you. And by scratch, I don't mean like scratch the cat. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't that good of a finder's <laughs> fee. Um, and uh, he shipped it out today. I have the tracking number. It is in three separate boxes. The box alone is in its own box. It's that big. It's got to be. That's that's a way to go. That's yeah. good. Boxes so, in a box. Yeah, piecemeal. Boxes in a box. It's on the way. My plan is when it gets here next week to leave the podcast. I'm just done with this. I'm just going to pack my bags. I'm going to I'm going to get my ghost command and get a cabin and we're going to live together. No, uh, I'm going to do a video. I want to do like an assembly video. I am going to put it together. I am going to put it on display. I don't know Where? how I'm going to. Yeah, that's. See, why are you coming at me with what are where? you? Well, I'm sitting here <laughs> in the room that we record in, and there's so much stuff. Like, well, it's not going in here, okay? Oh, in the toy room, it's not going in the toy room, it's gonna go under the uh USS flag. 
<laughs> yes. Because our cat. cat, Gene, is not going to be happy about that. With the cat. No. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, Jake, part of the thing we've been talking about over the last week or two is as you, as we've gotten new toys and started new collections, like you kind of have to sit in bed at night and like virtually rearrange your toy room. Right. right? And that's what I've been doing I do the at, same at night. Thing with my okay. Animal Crossing Island. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have a plan, but I don't know if it's going to work, but I have a plan. So, um, <laughs> You have twelve percent of a plan. I've got four percent of a plan, um, but I'm excited about it. it. It's definitely like I, you know, I've been I coined the phrase "Year of the Playset," um, and uh, I'm going to trademark that. And uh, I've been able to do it this year. I've gotten some awesome playsets. I got the 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 damn USS flag and the Police Academy playset. And like this, my stress is once I get this though, like I might stop collecting toys. Oh, like you finished the I, game, you beat it because you got the ghost command. I understand that. I mean, I think the ghost command is probably the top prize as far as play sets go. But I also, you know, I was watching the toy debate last week on yeah. Geek Dad mm-hmm. Life's channel that you uh, you helped out with. And and Shout whenever, Geek Dad Life. Referee. yeah. And when Jay started talking about that Technodrome, yeah, I was like, oh, I want a Technodrome. <laughs> and I started yeah. looking them up. Yeah, I feel like if it's year of the playset, you gotta have a technodrome. Mm-hmm. Well, I have that. Do you have that? <laughs> yeah, you need that. Yeah, Jake needs but it. But you know what? Oh, I didn't I know. I didn't know that it connected to the sewer playset. I didn't. And now either. I, I can I see it now. It. I didn't remember it, oh. so I think I'm gonna connect them. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited about it. We'll have more details on that next week. Um, but it is my top tier number one wanted toy action figure acquisition like ever i mean it's my jaws barrel yeah and you want to hear the sad part yeah want, it, hmm. can i get real for a second yeah always i don't remember if i had it as a kid i don't think i did probably didn't i know i, I had feel, some go for i was it. just gonna say i feel i feel like the um the filmation ghostbuster stuff was it was not on my radar as a kid you know the cartoon was a little bit here and there but I, I, I didn't come to appreciate Filmation Ghostbusters until I was a little older because I hated it as a kid. It's a fake. I hated it because it wasn't Ghostbusters, you know, and I would get annoyed when it was on because it would trick me and I would think that the real Ghostbusters was coming on and it, it was Filmation. And I didn't like it back then. So I don't I don't I don't remember seeing toys in stores or any of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what was the cost of it when it first came out and hit shelves? Not like make 120 bucks, 100 bucks, okay. maybe. I mean, it's like that's still. I mean, I'm just thinking about whether well, parents were like, well, it was expensive it and it was also not the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I mean, even like the USS flag was like 120 bucks when it came out. We saw they're trying to sell one at Toylana in, in sealed for forty thousand dollars. So it's like <laughs> it's so insane what has happened with toys, but anyway, so yeah, we'll, we'll have more updates on that um as we uh, as it gets closer it should be here next week and uh yeah i'm super grateful i'm super excited and um for such a rare you know what the most annoying thing is for such a rare hard to find play set i literally know three people personally who have it yeah <laughs> geek dad has one zach myers has one Although he he brings his around, Jake, he brought his yeah. to your house. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He sh- show and tell. I mean, it's a it's an impressive thing. That, I, I feel like you're going to do the same thing. No, but that would bother Craig because I know for a fact he won't even let me take it out of the toy room. We're going to take it to Grindhouse Burgers next. Yeah, time but we I go. think that Zach's making good use of it. Yeah, like enjoy it. No, Zach sharing probably, it with your friends. He probably repainted his to make it look like the Mario Brothers movie apartment or something. Uh, or like the Willy Wonka <laughs> Chocolate Factory. Um, and yeah, and Bobby 80s has one. So anyways, uh, excited about that. That's my stress. It's a good stress, but now it's being shipped, which is the most stressful thing ever because it's old and brittle. And Yeah, we'll but I, it, it sounds like you got somebody shipping it who knows what they're doing and is going to take sure, care of it. Sure, sure. And oh, shout oh, out cool. to... Um, the toy, I think it's called the Toy Addict in San Diego. Uh, they um, they actually individually wrapped all the small pieces and pre-packed it for me. So, uh, good people helping me out. It very uh, very much appreciated. Maybe um, we should go there. We should try to go there when we're in. Um, I don't know how far sure. that is from where we're going to be. I'm not that like San an hour. Diego? I think it's like an hour. We're totally gonna go. Cool. We have to. Um, okay. So we'll uh we'll we'll update that now. 
we have other things to talk about, but we got to talk about this movie we all went and saw. It's been on my mind. Is that can we do that? Yeah, it's been on the my uh, laptop screen too because I've been looking at pictures of it. So we all went and saw. Spoilers first. First, first of all, right off the bat, we're gonna probably... we're gonna get this. We're gonna get into some spoiler territory here, and I, I think it's important to you know the the goal is not to give away the movie, but to effectively talk about it. We're gonna have to get into some territory. Yes. Um. So the movie is X. It is the new A twenty four horror film. Um, Jake, what was weird about this movie is it kind of came on our radar. I, I didn't know much about this until that first trailer dropped. Like I hadn't heard any buzz. Like I didn't, I don't know. I usually, I, for something that has this kind of like, it's, it feels like it's going to quickly become like a cult classic. Uh, did you know about this thing? Yeah, I had heard about it um, not too long before the trailer came out, but just because the, the director T.I. West, he directed um, like two other horror movies that are kind of, really well received and they're, and they're older films at this point it was a while back but they're they're pretty good films and and you know like there's there's always kind of been a buzz around his name so whenever he started working on x there was you know i i saw it popping up here and there ti west is working on another horror film but i didn't know anything about it until the trailer dropped you know now i had seen his other films i haven't seen the sacrament is that good? Should I watch that? It's pretty good. The sacrament is. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that the, he did the sacrament. He did the. There's also, I think, a movie called The Innkeepers. Yeah. Um, yep. And he did that movie. That. that movie's pretty great. Um. The so the sacrament. What's that? I was just saying other movies, The Roost and uh, In a Valley um, of Violence. So the sacrament is. It's basically um the story of like Jonestown. And okay. it's not very different from like what actually happened. I think some of the names are changed and, mm -hmm. but some of it is like word for word from the recording, you know, it's just, it's what it's Jonestown, which if, if that, if you want to see that stuff, then yeah, it's pretty good. But um, yeah. innkeepers is good. And then there's another one he did too, that I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called, but, but yeah, dude makes good movies. Yeah, dude. I want to watch that. Um, the Jonestown type stuff. I know cults and I would love yeah, to I, watch. Yeah, I know from cults. Yeah, experience yeah. And I'd love to watch that. Yeah. I know cults. Yeah. I well, that cults. was kind of an element in X, which is the movie we're talking about. But which if we're giving background, I saw a trailer for it when we went to see mm, um, Scream, the new Scream oh, yeah. movie. And I remember it like uh, it, it kind of it hit me. It piqued my interest. Um, and then then just seeing it I, I felt so satisfied with that like because it's a there's a like commentary on religion and cult like beliefs and like it, okay. it's through in the movie i believe um because there's like that the preacher and stuff i don't want to spoil stuff, things are we cool talking about this well, yeah yes. no we're let's get into it let's yeah. get into it the, let me let me give the um the rundown here so yeah um starring uh mia goth jenna ortega who you knew from uh scream yeah, she's everywhere right now. Um, she's great. She's going to play Wednesday in the new uh, Adams Family show, which they also announced Christina Ricci is coming back to Adams Family, but she's not playing Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And they're what? saying she's not. Didn't you hear about that this week? No. They're, the new. OK, well, this is a completely different topic, but there's a new Tim Burton's doing this Wednesday show for Netflix. Yeah. Jenna Ortega mm -hmm. is playing the title character and. They announced this week Christina Ricci's coming back for an unannounced role. It's oh. I shouldn't say coming back. She's just doing. She's gonna be like Martin Heiss, basically. All right, it's it's gonna be her. That was it. You know who that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sir Martin Heiss. <laughs> Sir Martin Christ is here. Um, uh, okay. What I'm saying oh, okay. is, call me when they get Raul Julia back. All right, then I'll be impressed. Okay. Tangent, <laughs> tangent over. Not I'm just happening. saying not happening okay but also so many street fighter figures this guy yeah okay <laughs> um it's I a great cast let's let's britney snow mm -hmm. who by the way another i forced <laughs> for my birthday weekend we don't have to spend a lot of time on it but Yo, i forced yeah. abigail jake and jess mm -hmm. to watch pitch perfect with me although Jess is a longtime fan, like <laughs> so. We we we're on the same page. She's been in the pitch community for a while. Yeah, she's she's a she's a. What do they call their fan base? I don't, I don't know. know. Pitches. The son of a pitches. I don't know. Aka, Aka heads. Uh, yeah. Anyways, okay. uh, they didn't get 
spoiler alert. I hate everything. Jake I just didn't said. like it. Um, but Brittany Snow is in that movie. And then I think my new favorite actor is this this who's the guy who's like the the guy who is the producer of of the porno film that they're making oh. next. Owen Campbell uh, or Martin Henderson? The guy, um <clears throat> the guy who oh man, he's like who's who is it he's trying to he gave me such like it's, vibes me, of I got which a, dude are we talking about? The girlfriend or the no, guy the with main the, with the, the older the guy. guy. The, the guy who's guy. making oh. the movie. He's making the movie. Yeah. I hundred percent got Don Johnson vibes from this guy. Yeah. That's who I got. He also felt like he also felt like Stuntman Mike and Death Proof if his job yep. was yes. porn. little Kurt like Russell. It, it felt like Kurt Russell, yeah. He 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 Yes. There's a there's a certain kind of machismo that the Kurt Russell's Don Johnson's Patrick Swayze's of the world yeah have. it's like they know the language of women and they know how to like communicate and there's just something magnetic about them and he's um, like he might be a little sleazy but you kind of you're kind of into yeah, he it he is definitely but like he's still attractive <laughs> right you still get behind him like Kurt Russell so you know when Jake when I well, I'll throw it to everybody when I first saw the it would be easy to write this off as like oh this looks like a, a Texas chainsaw massacre kind of sure you know they're riffing on it right which th th abby well, they yes, kind of are a little are. bit yeah i felt like yeah i mean it has some pacing that's identical to the opening of texas chainsaw like going through the the house with the murders and like being able to see it with the cops there afterwards um and then like the journey to the scary place like that like a bunch of teenagers station, in a van yeah a bunch of teenagers going in the, in the van going to the gas station like in it's not plot like or anything like the exact same thing right, um, right, right but it has that kind of same pacing to it um but the story itself like does take off in a different direction um i gotta say something good direction jake i don't think i've ever gone to a horror movie with you we've been friends for a long time yeah i, I was so. stressed because I, I i was like i hope i want jake to like this movie I kept like looking at you. You know when like you know when you're showing somebody a movie you love and you keep looking at them to see if they're yeah. like, reacting at the part. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when that alligator popped up, I looked at Jake and I was like, I hope Jake likes the. Was I jerking movie. off? <laughs> that, yeah, that's what I. That's what I did. Like, can I tell you? We all looked at Jake when the this alligator, like literally, just they showed an alligator, just a scene with an alligator. Yeah. and I just saw Jake didn't do this for anybody, but it was just his eyes are locked on the screen. He just goes. <laughs> like stuff. I did. Was yeah. So I was like, yeah, but it wasn't yeah, I was into it. just a scene with an alligator. It was like a beautiful juxtaposition of like uh, the female form and like innocence and beauty and power and sexuality. And then like the, the mean, awful thing that is that like the predatory thing coming at well, her, was, which is that it why. was, it was also like the most tense beautiful. scene in the whole movie. I feel like. It was like yeah, the most suspenseful gorgeous. scene yeah. in the whole film, I thought. Yeah, it was great. Right. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, so the plot of the movie is this is a group of people that are going to this rural farm to make a it's porn. It's Airbnb in the 70s. Yeah, it's a 70s yeah. Airbnb. Yeah. And they rent out the place, and uh, they, they're going to make this porno film. Yeah, they rent out a barn to an adjacent homestead and there's a really nice couple that owns the house and you get to meet them a little bit Here's honestly the thing. they reminded me of craig and i in the future i was like i hope we can get to this wow. have this kind of fire do they wow. there's no way i would ever live that far from a hospital or medical center. yeah but no you were like that's gonna be us one day i always think about that like people who live in the middle of nowhere like what happens if they fucking you have a heart attack mm. they're yeah. just done they, they offer some what happened to people this movie had some comedic moments, and I feel like they kind of brought some of those moments to that peak. Like, it, I thought this movie was very funny. It, it was funny, like it that like what happens in the downtime during like horrific, gruesome murders is very funny if it's played. Well, it was right. and I think well, it was very funny until that stuff. Like it when that stuff starts, it's no longer funny. It's right. it's that mm -hmm. for the rest of the movie. Well, let's get into right. some let's get into some territory here. So, if you really want to avoid spoilers just don't listen in anymore but also you're probably not going to go see this movie so let us talk about it please don't turn it off come on we need the we need you to, we need you here with us okay yeah. it's a, yeah it's a movie about a pornographic film being made it's interesting but <laughs> think people will watch that's not really what the movie's about right the movie is about my favorite topic 
the passage of time. Okay. It really <laughs> is. If you think it is, about yeah. it, it is because the movie is about, you know, it's revealed. There's this old woman, you know, see, you see the old woman in the, um, in the, tra- in the trailers. Right. Mm-hmm. And we had had these discussions like, what is this? Is it, is she a werewolf? Is she a zombie? Like you start having like, you know, what, what is making this scary old woman, you know, what's driving her? What is her, her, her motive? Is it supernatural? Whatever. And then, you know, she's old and kind of decrepit in this movie, but she kind of has her wits about her. Right. She, it's not like she's like, I didn't find her to be like far gone. She is, she's, how do you say it? She's horny. (laughs) Like like she's, she's, it's like a, existential kind of thing she's old and when you become old and your body can't do certain things yeah like you just said she's horny that's <laughs> right that's the funny way to put it and right. that's true but she's like she can't connect with her husband the way she used to and all these fucking kids come into her and you know like how younger people treat old people as if they're right. dumb and they don't right. know and it's like and she's just she's tired of that i guess and the uh, and the, and it's it's such a, a a different, weird but way more realistic, I guess, uh, motive for um, the killings. And uh, I I saw a, a friend of mine on Twitter made a couple tweets about how they really liked the movie, but they thought it was sad. They were like, it's really sad if you think about like her reasons. They're like, everybody gets old and everybody goes through things where their body doesn't work the way it used to. And then there's there's also there's an article going around today. And I was like, I don't even want to read it I, I, because that's what it's about. And I was like, if I read this article, it's going to it's going to make me stay up at night thinking about my own mortality. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's oh, you don't do that already. <laughs> well, I already <laughs> do. But that's what I'm saying. I already <laughs> do. But I don't need something else on top of it. Right. I don't want to. Yeah. Re- I really enjoyed this movie and I don't want to not be able to watch it again. Because I'm thinking about that kind of stuff, but yeah, 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 that's what this movie's about. It's, it's about sweet and sad. mortality and growing old, and yeah, and it might and sound it fucked sucks. up, but like the the old Pearl and her husband, like the killing, the act of killing is kind of what kept them keeps them alive and together. It seems like it's almost like a sweet thing. Um, and in, like well, you're saying, Jake, with like the <laughs> right. growing old and being like envious and and not being able to be comfortable in your own skin, all of that is actually like very sad. Yeah, Ser- like seriously, serious stuff that people deal with. I'm there um, now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. I'm like, dude, I've been to the dentist. I am just like, fuck. Like, well, hold on, though. I want to explore this. So, our our main character, our our our, you know, our new, uh, I don't, I don't Maxine I think, Minx. No, no, Mia Goth. Okay. Well, I don't know what her character's name is. Maxine Minx. Maxine. So she's kind of going to be the star. And we're introduced to her early in the movie. She's doing lines of coke and she's a stripper and she's going to be the star of this this movie that they're making. And she's like objectively like beautiful, right? And one of the first like really creepy things that happens is the scene we were talking about earlier with the alligator where she's like she's kind of seductive looking and she's walking down to the water and we see the old lady kind of following her and stalking her but it's not like it becomes clear to me av really quick like it's I'm childlike like, almost it's childlike she, she has like a, a fascination yes. with her and also even before that there was a creepier moment that kind of feels like uh mrs fuck is it kirsch from um from it with mm-hmm. the tea scene um when she goes when oh the Mia, lemonade right yeah, yeah when mia goth lemonade, goes in yeah. and gets lemonade um made for her the pearl gives her like a touch on her like inside yeah oblique area and yeah. it's fair because she's wearing overalls which are awesome and i love that look but like she, her, the old woman pearl gives her that touch and like you're kind of you she said it. doesn't like, she oh, say she's like this will be our little secret yeah yeah it, she's like flirtatious childlike and deeply sexual with what that's she's what that's what i was i had that first thought during that scene i was like Oh, she likes her, but what? what she, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's revealed and when they're in the bed together. You even feel that more. Well, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, so, really, so, she so does so body she, paint. She, she, she sneaks in bed. She's like, I think there was more happening, like beyond what we saw on camera in that scene. That was my, yeah, guesstimate. She's so, in bed with a different character, right? 
No, that's yeah. No, she's oh, she... in bed with she's in bed with the girl that's in Scream. Oh, I I thought she was in bed with no Mia no 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 no. She's in bed with Mia Goth because the she... girl from Scream's locked in the basement at that point. Oh, and the girl from Scream basement. doesn't not to be weird, but I don't think there's any nudity or with her. No, no. At any point because she's younger. But anyway, so she has this um this like fascination where you're like, but what what the the stuff Jake's kind of talking about what we're call, kind of alluding to is like she sees herself in this young girl and there's envy and there's sadness. And also they're played by the same, the same person. person. Exactly. So, yeah. which I did, which I did not pick up on until afterwards, which testament to like the makeup and everything. Um, but like, it kind of got me thinking like, what is the overall message of the movie? And, and if you haven't seen it, you might be, if you haven't seen this movie, you're still listening to this, you're going, what the fuck are they talking about? But if you've seen it, like, because there's this scene earlier on where they are, they, they've filmed some of their, their movie. They've done some of their Wookiees and cookies, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all kind of sitting around hanging. They're having conversation. And Hey, I just want to say, I love that part. Just it reminds me of like when you do film something and like kind of have yeah you're like happy after like bologna sandwiches yeah but Kid Cudi which I did not know that was him either and he's great in this movie oh uh, yes he plays guitar he plays Fleetwood Mac uh whatever that song is chain landslide landslide yeah yeah and the girl from Pitch Perfect sings it mm -hmm. <laughs> when it was happening Brittany on Snow. when it, when it was first happening on screen I was like oh this is kind of like a fun little thing but when I started thinking about it afterwards I'm like. If you think about the lyrics of that song, can we sail through the changing ocean tides? Whatever else it says. Time makes you older. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, older. it's literally they're giving you I'm getting older too. The messaging of like the movie. And that's yeah. Jake, the, to me, that's fucking genius. I don't know that it's messaging like a direct, like we're trying to get this specific sentence or this sentiment. It's just like a it opens up and probes that and explores those feelings of uh like age and sexuality. Um like the power that you get and the power you lose as you age. I think that that's right. It more just makes you scratch your head and like, think about it rather than like, feel like it was directing you to like have a, a special, a certain feeling after it. It was well, good. Like in that really, I don't esoteric yeah. cool way. Well, Jake, the thing is what's interesting about this movie and like on paper, you might not look at like if, Listen, there's people who are going to watch this movie and go, I didn't get it. Like, I, I understand. And there's people like the people in front of us in the theater who will just watch it and laugh and drink. Laugh and think it was like a, a sexy, yeah. funny horror I think movie. They were a little, I think they were a little drunk. A little drunk. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a little it, was, bit. it was one of those like uh, fake Alamo draft houses. That <laughs> yeah, we was fake Alamo. I was trying to, um, I was trying to look here and find uh, T.I. West put out a statement after the movie was released and it was just kind of like a thank you for people for, you know, watching the movie and 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 talking about how it's been a while since he's done a horror film. But he does talk about in the statement, like what the movie was about and, and kind of how to him it's about growing old and filmmaking. You know what I mean? So oh, interesting. Um, I, oh, can't okay. find, I always I always I love when a director find it, though. <laughs> That's always the best when, like, you do like all this analysis of a movie, and then the director comes out, and George looks is like, "Well, a lot of people didn't realize." This. Well, everybody's interpretation is going to be a little bit different. Hold on. Well, they're always a middle Korean. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, a lot of people didn't realize Star Wars was actually about the American Revolution and the back. It's just like, what? What are you talking about? It's fucking. <laughs> no, it's not. Like, it's it's revisionist not. history. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. It's like when Steven Spielberg comes out and they ask him about Hook, and he's like, "Well, it's about the loss of innocence and childhood, and also the current state of the stock market." You're like, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> he never said that, by the way. Um, but Abby, what I was kind of getting at is like when you watch a movie, like this movie is brutal at times. I can't believe it's rated R. Like one of the first movies I've ever watched, and I went, "Whoa, this feels like an NC-17." Like there is some tough stuff in this movie, but for all the like for all the, like, the brutality and the murders, like I wasn't thinking about like literally she gets eaten by an alligator. I wasn't thinking about that when I left the movie, I was kind of contemplating the more like the more introspective side of it. Like the stuff that's really, it's like, it's like a, a, a hidden, I know you were talking, I'm sorry. You were talking no, you're good. Go for it. But you're good, dude. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's a horror movie and all that stuff is scary or, or it's meant to be, but, the trick is that that isn't 
the most horrifying thing about it. The horrifying yeah. thing is that every person watching this movie is going to grow old and feel like Pearl at some point in some small way. Yeah. And that's more horrifying than anything that happens in <laughs> yes. this so movie. Bummed. That's the fucked up nugget in there. A hundred percent. Which is why it's more of a think piece. Sorry, I've got a little stretch. Um, Abby. Yeah. Pearl. We learned her name was Pearl afterwards, by the way. Yeah, we we'll learned to, a lot. We'll get to that. Um, is this a horror icon that you now identify with? Yeah, I mean, she's literally like an... Uh, she. I look up to her, like the way that she embraces her sexuality <laughs> and carries herself and uses it. Um, I know she's got her flaws. You know, she's so ideas. mad at her husband for not. I do too. She's got a pet alligator. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. and she's apparently been feeding for decades. Yeah, like I think she's a she's someone that to look up to and to be inspired by. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, but like, there's she's got great moments. It's fun to see like. <clears throat> It's fun to see that that ageless like effervescence coming out while she's killing. <laughs> it's really kind of fun. <laughs> well, um, because it's the, meant to be fun, you know. So. Yeah. It's meant to be fun, mm -hmm. and there's some good kills. Uh, we shouldn't. You're like, if you're gonna this. see a kill, you want great music. You want the setup to be like, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, the first kill that she makes is the guy that's the that's filming. Oh uh, right, the cameraman. You knew he was gonna he's die being first. A little bitch, basically. <laughs> so like, you're like, hey, he goes, is he? Hold on. Is he being a little bitch? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure his girlfriend fucked a random Jenna or random was not a random dude. guy who's kid cutting. It was a did random guy to her. Doorway? Uh, he did not know them. Yes. Oh my god. He had a right hey. to be annoyed about hey. that. Her face, by the way, would she's originally just the boom mic holder. And she's like, oh my and she sees uh the I wanna fuck somebody. Knows. Yeah. She's like, I want to do that. Yeah, and she's like it, it actually to me, and I don't know if the director you know is inspired by boogie nights at all obviously that's a very famous movie that takes place in the same kind of subject matter um but there's the famous scene in boogie nights where philip seymour hoffman is holding the the, the boomstick and yeah. he sees mark Wahlberg and his like knees buckle and that's like, kind oh. of the same thing with jed ortega yeah. here oh, fucking idiot. <laughs> well not that yeah, scene. i know it's not that scene but i just i always like to do that scene anyway uh, uh, all right Pete. um uh, yes yes hey yeah. before we when we sat down or it yeah. might have been when we were in the lobby um i had read that this movie was pretty brutal yeah um and i wasn't sure you know the trailer looks like it's going to be pretty brutal and i i know i've seen other ti west films to me i was like the the people that i was seeing saying that this movie was going to be brutal i believe so i was like oh i think this movie is going to be like kind of rough and mm -hmm. it wasn't as rough as i maybe thought it was going to be but at one point, I, I I leaned over to Jess and I was like, oh, I'm not telling Craig and Abby, but I think this movie is going to be really tough to watch. I was oh, like, I'm not was... telling them because I don't I don't want to stress them out. But I think this might be really gross. No, but that I knew that about it. And that's why I was intrigued. Like it got that it, it, there was an itch that began when I saw the trailer. And I actually thought it was going to be more fucked up. I thought there was going to be like a body switching moment like during sexual activity on camera like i thought there was good like i was imagining something more even more like sinister yeah maybe. sinister but like uh yeah like uh it's just... like, like a supernatural thing yeah or... i'm trying to think yeah. Of the... yeah i did think there might have been a supernatural element to it but like when i got out of there i was like i i kind of thought it was gonna be more fucked up How... i don't i don't know what maybe this is just me. a statement on hey, all of us we're all like pretty we... fucked up it, it is very fucked <laughs> it's up. pretty it fucked might be a statement up. On i like how all of us are like statement. we loved it pearl was fantastic <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wait <laughs> she Talk she met up with someone to look up to she met up with the kids and they well here's the thing i like psycho and i like original old slasher movies i like 60s uh like uh uh now i'm totally hitchcock so when it comes to uh like seeing an old woman as like a fierce like formidable foe i think that's cool listen so as just... scary as she was no one will ever be scarier than alex winter dressed up as the grandmother in bill and ted's bogus journey yeah easily the scariest moment of my childhood <laughs> um so you know hold up like okay yeah yeah bogus journey you're right yeah right, right. for some reason i was like what i blanked no. on what movie you were talking about so a couple things i want to say cinematography in this movie fantastic it bums me out that they can capture 
the the look of a 1970s like grindhouse style slasher movie when like there's so many movies that would benefit from that like even the new texas chainsaw which i haven't seen so i can't comment on it too much but i imagine it looks a lot slicker than this yeah does. like this sure. movie has this like this visual this palette where you're just like you feel yeah there's a color palette out for it well there's yeah. something there's something about like i i want I think horror movies work better in those kind of settings, that kind of time period. I want my horror movies to look like that and to not have characters relying on cell phones and recording. You know, there's a, there's literally a scene in Texas Chainsaw where there's a bus full of people and they're all recording Leatherface and you're like watching Leatherface <laughs> footage through like TikTok. And I'm like, I don't want put me in a time period where there's no phones, you know, right. like that it yeah. just looks better. It just God, works yes. better. It's got a better yeah. feel to it. Yes. Oh my God. I totally agree. Abby. It's, that's such a, it's a great way to write stories. It's a great way to have like more conflict that you have to, to figure out and get through then. Um, there was something else I was going to say. I can't remember. Right oh, that's fine. What well, were you going to say? Well, I was going to talk about Mia Goth, our, our main character. Oh, I was going to talk about vintage clothing and how important that is for setting a good scene and getting the time period right, which they were all decked out in like very, very cool old clothes. It's amazing how many movies are set in like the 60s or 70s, and it's just clearly nobody put any effort into the world. So, oh, this is 90s, 60s. <laughs> um, how, how, how does Mia Goth uh, compare to other famous... Uh, uh, leads. Female she's leads. up there with um, old uh, Midsummer, uh, Florence Pugh. I'd say like like she's she captures or the um who was from who's from Witch who was also in that um Edgar. Oh, Wright I don't recently. I don't remember her name. Uh, Anya Anna Taylor Joy. Anya Taylor Joy. But yeah, I think she's up there. Like I would put her above that. Like she has the sometimes her looks are almost like scary in like a moment but then just like absolutely breathtakingly beautiful um right. and i think she is i really felt like her confidence in um the role and you kind of identify with her having a dream of being like, the line that she says i will not accept a life that i do not deserve i i love that and i really liked that like as her thoroughfare just being like um wanting more out of life reaching for it knowing what her value was i thought that i thought that she really embodied all that stuff and as an uh doing it like as an actor she was just fucking awesome i want to see good. another thing i know there's another thing coming so i'm like looking forward well to let's that. talk about that we'd heard the jake you had said there was a post credits yeah and while we were watching it in my head i was like what is the po like what is the post credits gonna yeah be? like me too they, well i was like are they gonna show the movie i was gonna, they're gonna show the movie that they're making yeah you know oh well, right i i, I kind of thought I noticed while watching the movie that you know the the guy who was the um who was actually filming it his his big thing was like well we're not making a you know he's like we're making a good movie he's like right. it's gonna be artful or whatever and I noticed and I don't know if you guys are planning on doing a rewatch but I, I when am. he's when he's filming any of the porn scenes he's never like aiming at their privates or anything. right he's like, aiming like there's face. there's yeah, like, they cut yeah. face like i was like he's aiming at her face or his face like even when they're not showing there are a couple times where they show like what you're seeing mm -hmm. but there's times where you're watching the scene the people are over here they're doing their thing and he's got the camera and i'm like that is not aimed at anything that most people want to look at when they're and i and i was like is the after credit scene going to be like the movie and we see that like he didn't even film the footage. any of the right. fucking or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> see, he's trying to make a good movie. You know, um, like what he's got. Post credits was a teaser trailer for the prequel that they're making. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Called Pearl, which is our, our main old lady as a that, young woman. Yeah. That's also when I realized that Pearl was played by because I was like, oh, because mm -hmm. as a young woman, they just had her. They just had me right. mm -hmm. Um, it looks like it's going to be like aesthetically completely different. Like the the colors are super saturated. It's like uh, daytime. Yeah, yeah. She's like wheeling somebody to the alligator. It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. farm stuff, that. chickens. Honestly, it was just like a stuff. lot of. I, I I read that he wrote. They were filming. They were filming this, and there was a um there was a COVID. Uh, lockdown like a for shutdown, two weeks. Right, right. Yeah, for two weeks, and he wrote the prequel 
while in that shutdown. And then at the end of filming, they already had all the sets built. So he was just, he asked Mia Goth, like, Hey, do you want to, you want to stay and film another one? And she was like, let's do it. So they went ahead and started going. I love that. Me I too. love that. I love a story because like it's that. also building a universe because it's about it's called Pearl. It's going to be about Pearl. And yeah, see, one thing it's funny, though, it's like, story. you know, throughout the movie, you're like, oh, my God, she's she's murdering these young people because she's jealous because she is aging and she can't have what they have anymore. But then you see the thing and you're like, oh, no, she always she's killed. People. Always. That's, been always that's been. how she gets well, your kicks. Yeah. Well, well, they also I mean. We we do know that these aren't the first kids she's murdered because she's got somebody dead in the basement. <laughs> somebody in she's the got basement. somebody dead in the basement. Um, Kid yeah. Cuddy's character finds a, a Volkswagen Beetle uh, sunken in, in the the pond yep. or whatever. So yeah. like there there are hints that it's maybe not the first time. Oh, I bet we'll find out about that. That pond is so eerie and like beautiful at the same time, which is and he gets thing. taken out by the. We haven't talked about the husband that much. The husband who like pearls begging him to be with her like romantically and he keeps going to, to he keeps telling her like what about my heart and she's like oh, i don't care maybe yeah and there is a pretty graphic like scene of them together and with mia goth like under the bed it, it's very <laughs> you know in those situations you always anytime there's an under the bed situation mia goth horror, is on top of the bed and under the bed right. at that point <laughs> anytime <laughs> Anytime you see a horror movie or or something where somebody's under the bed hiding, I'm, I'm always like, what do I do in that situation? And this was a situation where I was like, I would kill myself. Like, I <laughs> this, is the, the, uh, this is the worst I would just be thing like, guys, people. I'm here. Go ahead and take care <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. So, um, very well-reviewed movie. The horror community seems to be embracing it. A lot of love. Another big win for A24. Uh, definitely worth a rewatch. The cast is, you know, I love that we're in the era of horror movies having great acting because that was not always the case, you know, for the first 25, 30, as much as I love Friday. It's hit or miss. Right, right. It can be right, right. Yeah. Um, but this is a cool, cause like it, it is, it does have elements of like a slasher movie, but anytime you have a slasher movie that does something different and kind of helps like add a new wrinkle to the genre, I think that's really cool. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it takes building blocks that, that have been essential and part of the foundation of uh, horror movies and kind of like reinterprets and puts them in different places. It's and Jenna cool. Ortega is awesome. Even though the scene where she finally escapes the basement and she starts arguing with Mia Goth and I was like, wait, they're supposed to be teaming up. What's happening? She runs out the door, just gets blown away immediately. <laughs> I, I laughed so hard. Yeah. Um, and also when when Pearl pulls the gun, pulls the trigger, and it blows her halfway across the yard. I also That's laughed really hard. That's fucking funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's the kickback on those shotguns. Um, I don't know. I don't have much else to say other than I yeah. recommend this movie. I give it's it great. two thumbs up. Give it 10 X's. <laughs> 10 X's. If I see one more person make the joke on Twitter of, I bet the sequel is going to be called XX. I uh, bet the, the next one's going to be called Triple X. It's like, stop Shut it. Shut up. Have you even seen it? Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Go watch it. You're not funny. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> I was also mad because I didn't think of it first. Well, next time, just say it. Tell them. Next you're allowed, time you're allowed to do that on Twitter. You're allowed to tell them. Um, the prequel will come out later this year. And uh, yeah, maybe they'll be, maybe this is the new Conjuring universe. This Don't, is going to be like, come on. <laughs> they just keep building on. I mean, if your universe is based on telling really cool stories in really interesting settings and act, you know, with great actors and really great set pieces, then like that's cool. I want to say one thing that the, the through line in the movie, they keep referring to this preacher that's on the TV. He's in the TV in the gas station and the TV in the, at the end. And it's this very creepy, like it, it kind of has that like Westboro Baptist, like revivalist church thing. And it's revealed that his daughter is, uh, the main character, Mia Goth, spoiler yeah. alert. Do a movie on that guy. Yeah, there's that's some the, that's fucked up stuff going on over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll help. Was that movie? Was it? Didn't Kevin Smith make a movie kind of like that? Red State. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's like similar. But it's is that kind movie of good? A, it, no, it's, it's not. Into some it's shit. not good. Kind of a movie, and it's not good. No, I've I only saw it once. I remember I remember liking it, but I bet it sucks. Okay. No. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Abigail, before we move on to our final topic for today. I want a property of X shirt, like those old like property of XXL gym or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah. Just property of X the X. movie. Just See that would, pearl on the back. That would be good, like promotional merch. They're handing that out at like the Regal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um well, I want to talk about Patreon real quick. I want to talk about YHS on Patreon and let people know how they can get access to all this bonus features, all the bonus audio. Patreon.com slash yes, have some. People ask all the time, how can we support you guys? We like what you do. That is the best way, and you get something out of it. So it's a win win situation. Patreon.com slash yes, have some. We have two to three bonus audio episodes every month. We've got multiple tiers. There's a $5 tier, get you access to all the audio. $10 tier, we do bonus, uh, you know, little extras, including like we did the Zoom hang last month. We're going to have another one coming up very soon. Where we all get together, we just hang out and we talk. And I love those. Have you loved those, Jake? Yeah, they're fun. I want to do. I want to do one this weekend. I think let's do really one this fun. weekend. Yeah, let's do let's one this do weekend. It. Let's do one this let's weekend. Let's do sure. it, Abigail. Yes. Do you like the Zoom hangs? I absolutely love them, and I think that we can incorporate some like game playing in the future, like playing the new Ghostbusters game, uh, new Mario Kart races, race tracks, bonus. Oh tracks yeah, that'd together. be fun to do some like cool. some some gaming. Mm-hmm. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but besides that, it's just good to hang out and talk. It's we, like a good social. Yeah, and we've done like movie watch alongs. We we got some fun stuff planned. So if you want to get in, we're actually recording a bonus episode directly after this episode. So if imagine you get an hour and a half of YHS, you're like, I don't think I want a little more. More. Then you can sign up to get friends, basically. <laughs> hey, also, <laughs> here's the deal. And I, I I'm not not joking. We've been doing Patreon for a couple years. Five bucks a month you immediately get access to our entire backlog. It's a private it's a lot uh, of stuff. podcast feed. We've got all of Jacob Walsh versus Stephen King special episodes on there. We've got full movie reviews. We And sometimes you get more unfiltered thoughts, things we can't yeah. put on you know, all the airwaves. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes you just get me driving around in the car talking to my phone. When I, I'm just like, I need someone to talk to. I'll talk to Patreon. So uh, <laughs> Sign up for friends. Patreon.com slash yes, have some. And there's also a Discord channel. Yeah. That's, I think, the most fun. I mm-hmm. love the Discord channel. We have a, a you get access to a private YHS Patreon. Um, no, I'm sorry, Instagram. That's what that thing's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we we have a lot of fun. The Discord chat's great. People helping each other finding toys. eBay, a lot of eBay links in there. Did you guys see yeah. this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Good so resource. It's a great resource. So check that out. patreoncom slash yes, have some. So. This thing happened today. I didn't know that. I mean, I had heard this was going to happen. But I didn't know it was happening this quick. Lee, Matt Reeves, director of the Batman, I'm wearing a Batman shirt, by the way. Somebody asked me today. I was at like a store. Someone's like, "Is that a welding shirt?" I was like, first of all, I don't know what a welding shirt is." And no, it's Batman. Um, deleted scene, the Joker scene, the full Joker scene, which was way longer than I was expecting. I yeah. thought it was like a thirty-second thing. I didn't. It was like a mm-hmm. five-minute scene in the movie sure you've all watched it batman goes to arkham it's very silence of the lambs it's very much i'm gonna interrogate the joker or use the joker who's already in arkham to try to learn more about the riddler it's kind of like you know it's silence of the lambs uh she goes to hannibal lecter because he's the expert serial killer so she's trying to figure out how to find what's his name buffalo bill yeah right mm-hmm. yeah it's the same kind of setup it's yeah kind gives, of a- him, gives him the file on the riddler and everything so, yep. Jake, yeah, I was really interested in your thoughts on this because I know you are pretty opinionated about DC and the Joker in general. Um, what did you think? What did you think of this scene? Um, I, I'm glad they cut it out. I first of all, I don't know if I got. I think maybe I got Joker fatigue. Um, I don't like this Joker. I know it's only five minutes, so it's hard to get a sense of a character. But it's he seems very fan film ish. Oh, interesting. Okay. A, it's I don't know. It just you know they they, they will give him a messed up face. His voice seems very. I don't know. It seems like a fan film acting job. Doesn't it? Like it's not a fully developed thing. Almost. I, I, I don't. I don't know if it's just because I've gotten to a point where like Joker is not interesting to me anymore. There's so many Jokers out there, and they're they're <laughs> just a getting. Funny sentence. Well, I feel like they're getting worse and worse. They're getting like less diminishing cool. returns. They're yeah. not fun anymore. They're like annoying now, and it's like it's the same fucking thing every time. I'm like, okay, cool. He's laughing, uh, <laughs> but um, 
I think. <laughs> you okay. Uh, That's funny. Uh, so it's weird on that. Like in that sense, I don't like it. But I think the smarter thing that could have been done is they should have cut out the other Joker scene from the film too. The you know the the, the snippet the Joker yeah. and the Riddler. They should have cut that out. They should have waited six months, a year from now, when they're you know somewhere right in between uh, the Batman and the sequel, and then just drop this scene. You know what I mean? Right. Like, can you imagine if you had no? Can you imagine if they never said, "Oh, the Joker was originally in the in the movie," and you didn't know that this scene existed, and then just six months from now, when it's all kind of dying down. They just dropped it. And then at the right. end, it was like, and then maybe at the end, it cut to like the title for Batman 2 or whatever. Yeah. You know, like that would have been cool. Don't you think? That, I, I think that would have been, been very cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, but... I think what happened was th- when they did test screenings of this movie, they included this scene and yeah. like it kind of had gotten out there. So the actor's name, I want to make sure to say his name again. It's uh, Barry Keoghan. He's in Eternals. Uh, Abby, let me get your opinions first. Go for mm, it. I felt like it was kind of like a side dish that was just one too many for the main, like for the meal, right. kind of like it. And it didn't, <clears throat> it, uh, it felt kind of like a different story. That was not the story being told. It brought up too many like questions and like made your mind go in that direction too far away from the actual story in the Batman. So I get why it was cut. I think Jake's idea of having it be like, as a little drop further down the road and we get no Joker in the Batman that we just got, that is, that would be best for me because I don't want to have an overload of villains. I also don't know how I feel about this Joker. Um, We've had a lot of Jokers and it feels like the modern, but yeah, it feels like a lot of the modern interpretations, like in the comics. Right. And it also like, I hate, I don't, I don't want to, this feels like a cheap thing to say, but like, kind of feels like some version of Heath Ledger. Like the yeah. Jared Leto Joker kind of felt like some version of Heath Ledger. Like maybe we should just go it's in just a different hard direction. not to. I mean, it's like there, I, I get that everybody really likes the Joker and that he's the most icon. I, I get that. But also like, we've just had so many it's been I'm a just lot. worn out. I'm just worn out on the Jokers. And it's like, unless you got something really different, and unique to do, then it just feels like, like, like it, he looks like this. He looks like a CW version of the Joker. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looked, It did not seem like everything that they do in Matt Reeves, the Batman. It's all great. All the choices, all the style choices, all the costume, everything's great. Mm-hmm. And then you see their version of the Joker, and it's like, all right, well, that looks like a hollow. Like this seems <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. My cousin yeah. doing a stupid Halloween costume. <laughs> my mm-hmm. cousin. You know, oh, cool. and, and, my cousin James is in this movie. <laughs> hey, my cousin's name is James. Um, and uh, really? but it also, yeah, really. And um it's weird. But it also is kind of I kind of like the idea of of Batman using the Joker to help. But also, isn't it weird to see the Joker and he's like, well, the file. Let me see what's in your. F-. And it's like he's, he doesn't know. Like, wh- why does he know what's happening? It's just, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I don't know either. And it's very, it's kind of like this. Does Warner Brothers push DC to have the Joker? Is that what happens? Like, are they saying we need the Joker in this movie? We need, we need at least a scene so we can test it. To see if that's what people want. Like is and then it's like to me, it kind of like takes away. It a hundred percent takes away because at the end of the day, you're kind of like shoehorning in a character that just doesn't fit in this movie. And like it kind like Abby said, it kind of feels underdeveloped or like halfway there. So like you see, okay, I'm gonna use the top chef analogy. When you're trying to cook a meal in an hour. And you add too many dishes, and you don't really get to the one till the very right. end. It's just a thoughtless and dessert. It turns out to be cake, maybe. Yeah, it's I, thoughtless cake. I mean, on on one hand, I do like the idea of like, oh, this Batman has kind of already encountered the Joker. We don't have to get into all that. So when the Joker does show up, it's like they already know each like that. I get. We've seen the Joker and Batman's 
creation stories a hundred times, but it does seem like I, I said this when we did our, our review episode for the Batman. I think the worst scene in the movie is the, the Joker scene. It feels so stuck in from a different movie. It does not feel like it belongs at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And, and also like the, the design is weird. Like these got all these, like it, it, it I think fan film's the best way to put it. That's what it felt like. It yeah. felt like a fan film. It, 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 and that movie does not feel like a fan film. That, that movie feels very, you know what it actually felt like? It felt like the cut scene in a video game. Where it's like a nondescript actor with a kind of a Joker voice and a kind of a Joker look, and you're his like, la- oh. "Hey, his laugh sucks." <laughs> well, you don't like la- if you're the Joker, you gotta have a cool laugh. You can't just be he just laugh sucks. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. anyway, so okay, well, that's online. You could go check it out now. Um, what else did we need to cover tonight? The Ghostbusters game. Yeah, let's talk about it. Spirits unleashed. Mm-hmm. Sure. They're unleashing spirits. Um <laughs> I don't know. I care. <laughs> Listen. What? Listen, I care. <laughs> but I don't care as much as other people do. I yeah. didn't care about the, the the Ghostbusters video game that everybody loves is like the greatest thing ever. I always care. I I like it and I'm glad that it exists. Mm-hmm. But I don't like lose my like there's people who are like let's get a group together let's play some ghost it's just like i it's just not my thing as much i'm not a gamer like that having said that it's new ghostbusters content it's in the world of ghostbusters afterlife ernie hudson and uh dan Aykroyd are in it so i'm cool with it i mean i'm, I'm glad sure. that it exists sure whether or not like we have to wait to play it right and it's pri- like the thing is, it's primarily an online game. It's like it's like the Friday the Thirteenth game. It, the the goal is to get people. You create your own Ghostbuster. Well, that, that to me is the biggest. That's my dig- biggest disappointment with it. Because yeah. that's not how I want to play games. Like that's just not how. Like that's that is not. I'm not the audience for this. Like I love Ghostbusters, and like you just said, yeah, it doesn't. You know, it looks it looks like it's probably fine. It looks fun. Right. It, it's I, I do like the old video game. I don't play right. video games a lot either, but I play that old one a lot. It's really fun. It looks exactly like it feels like you're a Ghostbuster when you play that game. The streams look exactly like they do in the movie. They don't in this one. Um, right. uh, but I like the idea that you get to build your own kind of character. That's cool. But the fact that you got to have, you know, the online play and you got to play it with other people, that is a that's a no for me. That's not like how that. I no, I, like I do not like that. Game. I want to put it on and mosey around and just do whatever I want and play right. it at my own pace. Well, I think it will it not will have, have that other... option. Yeah, like an open Hey, will it though? Because some of those games do not. I bought Friday the 13th and I can't play it unless I'm online. Right. And also like the Friday the 13th online server got shut down. Now there were some issues with that. I I don't play a whole lot of games, but I have read that a lot of those games that are like online only like that, sometimes the servers don't last. Right. There it kind of gives the game like a, like a, a shelf a life lifespan. Almost. Yeah. So that bums me out because that's not how I want to play it. But I'm right. one I'm one person. You're one person. But, uh Abigail, you watched the trailer. What'd you think? Uh it's it to me, yeah, similar to Jake. I I don't I do not like to get on and compete. I'd much rather have my own personal experience being able to explore the world um, and look for neat, I don't know, like being able to go in the library or being able to go into the museum on your own and do your own things that aren't necessarily missions that are getting you towards the end of the game. You just want to explore. Yeah, uh, but that's not, I mean, I'm not the biggest gamer and that's not the type of gaming that I do. Um, so that that's why it's not that appealing. But it's it's cool. It's um, Ghostbusters, I like to though. see a Ghostbusters yeah, I'm gonna, trailer. Yeah, I'm gonna get it and play it. You know, I'll, I'll check it out. But I'll, I'll get it and play it if there is a just like a if I can play it on my own. If I gotta so get I'm online, pretty sure. it's cool that you can play the ghosts and like be them instead of just. I yeah. get. Hey, I guess, I guess right. <laughs> it's cool that you yeah. can fly around and get shot at. Mm-hmm. So we can take a look at some of it here. Um, I just want to basically talk about how the 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 so. Well, let me go back real quick. The uh, 
in the game, Razor Cult Books is next door to the firehouse, which I think is very funny. That you don't funny. you don't have to go far yeah. to find Ray. I, I wish it. that was a real setup. You have to walk and take like, Uber. Winston's like, listen, if I'm gonna pay for the rent, I, you're getting next door. Okay. So um, so uh I, it's cool to see. I, it feels like Ernie Hudson. Look at that. <laughs> Like that's just funny to look at. Yeah. Ernie Hudson sitting at Peter Bateman's desk or or, or Janine's desk, and uh, he's kind of running the show over there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a smaller game studio. I do like the idea that you create your own character. I like the idea that it imports your your username. It gives on your name badge. I saw people complaining. <laughs> the biggest complaint I saw this online was, "Well, you, once again, you don't get to drive the Ecto." <laughs> This is so funny. Uh, I saw right. a lot of that. Um, but of course, when I first saw this, I was like, this is it. This is the new team. And I was like, oh, these are just all like the creative characters. I can't, I can't wait until the next movie comes out and it contradicts things in the game and people right. we just have to do this all over again. We have yeah, to have no all this way. non-canon crap. Well, they, they, they maybe that's why I feel lackluster about it. Because <laughs> I think we all want to see the afterlife stuff. Uh the uh there the, we go. the press release said. Um, that this is canon. This takes place after the events of Ghostbusters Afterlife. So, um, I, I next time we see Ghostbusters on film or, or in a TV show, um, I'm assuming that you know the Ghostbusters will be back and running in some established form. Um, we do see this a uh, little. It looks like Bill Murray from What About Bob? Yeah, is in this uh, uh, you know, walking past raise a call here, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it, it looks fun. Obviously, Dan, Ernie, back. You're a Ghostbuster. I, I'm so I'm totally in the minority. Like, I like Ghostbusters because it's funny. That's the main reason I like Ghostbusters. So, like, yeah, it's cool to be a Ghostbuster. Get a proton pack. I'm sure I want my main thing is I want the game to be good. Like, I want it to be fun because yeah. if it's fun and and the gameplay is good, then you're then then it's a Ghostbusters game and it's great. But mm-hmm. You know that la- that answer the call game. You know, or yeah. any of the, a lot of the mobile games you, you got not great. Well, this kind of looks like a mobile game to me. I, I think like I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, play it and I'll, I'll I'll play it and I'm sure it's going to be fun. You know, to an extent, but uh, you know, in the future, if I'm like, oh, you know what, I feel like playing a Ghostbusters video game, I'm probably going to play the one from 2009 because like. Right. You can do all the things that you want to do. You can do it by yourself and with the original four Ghostbusters talking to you the whole time. Right, it, right. It's different. It looks great and whatever. Mm, yeah. uh, but I mean, I'm just excited that there's anything. Just yeah, more it's exci- I don't I mean, care. There's more the Ghostbusters thing- stuff and, and Ernie the- and Dan are involved. So Right. The thing that got me excited was, you know, since Ivan passed, we, it's been pretty quiet. There hasn't been any... You know, obviously, it's going to be a while before we know what's going on for the future. But it, it's nice to know, like, hey, the future's here; it's happening. Yeah. And um, right before we recorded, there was a uh, an announcement that they're doing a limited edition vinyl of the Afterlife soundtrack, limited to twenty five hundred oh. copies, and it's on sale. Who's, who's I bought that? it. Just Sony what? Music. I did, oh. and it's using the um the cover art from like the 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 one guy from Twitter who got his cover art to be the DVD the uh of the the muncher chase so it's pretty oh, cool okay. but i like that it's limited 2500 copies so, very cool that's yeah. cool yeah. but anyway so yeah that's that's about it well let's round table this abigail any final thoughts that's good to have new ghostbusters content in whatever form it's coming in and i'm grateful for that um i really want to go see uh pearl when it comes out i'm excited for that as well and i've enjoyed this conversation with the two of you thank you do you think do you think she ref- that place where she pushes the people into the uh, the water for the alligators? Yeah. Do you think she refers to that as Pearl Harbor? Mm. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm the sorry. Thing that's fucked up about that is a woman's in a wheelchair. It's- I know it looks oh, really. I, I, I wonder if it's her mom. Yeah. Hey, have they put yeah, that? Do you think the mom becomes the alligator? Something like that. Mm-hmm. The no, mom I think becomes- no. She's her mom. I, I think an alligator Jesus. eats her mother. Maybe Jason's in the lake. Hey, listen, have they put the pearl trick? Can you watch that online by itself? I haven't. I haven't looked. I wonder. It might be because I want to see it again. Mm-hmm. I I want to see the whole movie again. God, same I be, here. I, be, I thought about going back. It'll be on streaming soon. Like it won't be in theaters that long, but it's doing pretty well. Dang, I don't. 
I don't know if it's out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen, everybody, this was fun. So what you can do is follow YHS podcast on social media at YHS podcast. Oh, I forgot to put up our banners tonight. Dang, we got fancy new banners and you didn't put them up. Banner, Michael. I'll just put up, look, I'll just put up the one it comes with. Use banners to summarize your talking points and display calls to action. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can do this one. Follow YHS and Toy Anxiety at YHS Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Tune into Toy Anxiety every Tuesday night at 9.30. Uh, we had a really good episode of Toy Anxiety this week. It was a lot of fun. Um, happy birthday to Ryan Dole. Today's his birthday. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to run down uh, what else we have to get off our chest. We're going to Star Wars Celebration. That's what we're going to talk about on Patreon. Yep. Sign up for that. Sign up to hear our thoughts because we've got thoughts. They announced their first guest today. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, they did. Will, be, will Warwick confirm? Will Warwick, will Warwick Davis be at Star Wars Celebration? <laughs> will Jacob Walsh finally get the sit down that he deserves? The I one-on-one so. conversation. Warwick and Walsh. Yeah. The new <laughs> spinoff podcast. <laughs> YHS on Ireland. Each episode we talk about... Um, uh, five minutes of the Leprechaun movie. Every episode is the next yeah. five minutes. Okay. Yes. Then I can do a minutes. Willow episode. Also, just spitballing. I want to do some YHS trading cards. I want to make that happen with some like signed yeah. cards. We'll get Mark Halton to sign some cards. We'll get Trevor Morgan. Oh, we'll get idea, Logan yeah. Kim. We'll get there'll be a YHS card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. let's do Howie that. Mandel. <sighs> Paul Did you open it? Paul yeah, Sunnyly. I, I did. I got it right here. Uh, Jake's going to show us something. Yep. The Howie Mandel signed card that, that comes with it. the new. That is awesome. You know, I probably should get it because I have Dude, a Zach. I, I've got the first Gremlins um, <laughs> Ultimate Gizmo signed by Zach Gallagher. Yeah. So buy it. All right. I just like that you could go to Target and buy a Howie Mandel. I know. <laughs> I love it. I wish they did a Phoebe Cates. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. We all do. <laughs> we, all wish, <laughs> we all wish we could hang out with Phoebe Cates. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us. Have some podcast. We will see you next week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel or the podcast feed. Abigail, I'll give you the final thought. Uh, Littlest Pet Shop toys are fantastic. You should pick them up. Um, They make me very happy, and they're great to fidget with. That's my final thought. That's your final thought. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye.